Hello everyone. So in this video, I will show you how to call the dynamics action using the JavaScript. To call the dynamics action using the JavaScript, I will be using the one of the ribbon button in the CRM. So in this video, you will also learn how to set up the ribbon buttons in the dynamics and how to set up the JavaScript for the ribbon buttons and inside the JavaScript how to call the action of the dynamics. So you will learn a lot of things in this video. So let's proceed for that. So here is my requirement uh, which I'm going to show you in this video. So I have entity student. On this entity, I will be putting one ribbon button here next to the uh, new button. And this is the home screen. And in this uh, home screen of this, uh, of this entity, I will be putting one button. And on this button, I will uh, write uh, one JavaScript function. And that function will call the action. So to uh, call the action, so I have to select the action first, right, which I'm going to achieve. So in the last videos already, uh, we have developed the action. So in my in my solution, the configuration solution, already I have the this action which we have developed in the last videos and the last sessions. So what this action is doing is, this is creating the record of the student, but it is expecting some parameters. So before we call this action, we have to set up these parameters, right? So I will be showing that. So this we can set up using the JavaScript. To to make this setup to call the Java to call this action using JavaScript, we can use the some built-in resource and those are uh, you can find online the CRM REST builder. It is very using this CRM REST builder, you can build the query to call the action and a lot more. So here uh, you can find this uh, CM rest builder if not then in the description box of this video I will send I will attach the link uh, you can download from there and also to customize the ribbons of the any entity you have you can use the ribbon workbench to so that the ribbon workbench you can find the solution online if not that I will attach the link in the description box you can download from there also so you can customize the ribbon, uh, ribbon using the river workbench solution. Otherwise, using the XRM toolbox, you can customize. So the uh, the link of this XRM toolbox also I will attach in the description box. So you can connect to your XRM toolbox and then you can install the uh, ribbon workbench solution in that. So you will be uh, you will be learning how to how to set up this and how to how to call the uh, how to call the javascript functions on the ribbon button so we'll see that but before we go there go there and let me quickly uh, go through you through the crm rest builder so when you go to the crm rest builder when you click this once you have installed that you can see these solutions crm rest builder or the river workbench solution these are the managed solutions so these solutions like when you uninstall then it will just remove all the things from this dynamics so whatever the components are coming with this so it will not affect your instance however it will work along with the entities which are present in your instance and do that so uh, you will be installing these solutions in your dev instance mostly or the training instance and uh, you will not uh, I, the it is recommended that uh, you should not install these solutions in your production because in the production you will be sending the complete develop package so no need to develop there in the production so in the dev instance uh, if you if you want you can install this these solutions for your development and you can build the solutions and then you can send the package or the solutions for the production so uh, th that is why since this is my uh, sandbox instance so i have installed the these two solution here and uh, these solutions are the managed solutions so when you click on the solution after installed then you will get a uh, view like this and you can see we have two things here the endpoints the 2011 and the web api since the dynamics 2016 was released they have introdu introduced the new concept of the web api and using the web api you will have the web api endpoint and with that you can do a lot of operations you can see the single retrieve multiple retrieve create update and we have the retrieve next link predefined query action and the function so using the web api you can call the action since the CRM 2016 onwards. But before that, like CRM 2013, 11, or 15, uh, 
this thing web api concept was not there so you cannot call the action means you cannot build this uh, query using the uh, crm rest builder so it is uh, it is not available here you can see these things are not highlighted so you cannot build the query for that however you can build the query for these uh, operations so this is applicable for CRM like CRM 2011 to 2013, 2015, whether it is online or on-premise, you can build that. But for the CRM 2016 onwards, we have the VVPA concept and we can use this uh, uh, concept to call the action here. So I will be using this one. And so to show you that, um, uh, I will select the VVPI and I will select the action here, which I'm going to call. I'm not uh, going to, because uh, here uh, in my requirement, I'm going to show you how to call the action. So you will select the Wave API, and then uh, you will select the action which you are going to develop. Uh, and here we can see we have three different kind of format here. You can use this simple X XML HTTP request. You can use the Wave API, which is present in the solution. If you go to the uh, in your customizations and developer resource, you can find the Web API endpoint. So you can use this endpoint to uh, to call the action. Uh, also, if you want to use any jQuery like Ajax call, you can do that too. So in this video, I will be showing you the using the XML HTTP request, and uh, you can build the query using that. So. When you select the XML HTTP request, you can see you have the two types of process enabled, synchronous and synchronous, but in case of Web API, only asynchronous process are there. So meaning is that the uh, Web API, current Web API, all the calls which will happen through this Web API, it is not supported for the synchronous. It will always be the asynchronous process. So you cannot have that. But for the case of the XML HTTP request and the jQuery, you will have the synchronous and synchronous both the process. So let me select the uh, XML HTTP request. I will take the synchronous process. And since um, this action, which I'm going to call here, as I mentioned before, this action is the global action. So it is not a specific to any entity. So that is why I will not have to select any primary entity over here. We know that action, we have the uh, two, one feature that is you can make this action as a global, not a specific to any entity. So in this case, uh, the primary entity will be optional to you. However, if you have any action which you are going to call using the JavaScript and you have selected the specific entity here, then you have to select the primary entity over here. Then you have to uh, you have to search your action which you have configured. So this is the my action name. So you can see the schema name here, the unique name here. That is the uh, my action. So inside this action I have these many input arguments so those will be automatically populated and you can select that too so here let me select this argument which I want to put into my query so I will select this too. okay and I have to pass some value here right for this you can see in this uh, action it is expect expecting some input argument so here I will set up some text uh, uh, test argument here so let me do that so it is test this is also test and this is also test and here this is also test. so for this contact number let me make some random number okay and this is test but uh, in case of the course applied for since these are the entity reference you can see the parameter type is entity reference so these are nothing but the object you can say object or the lookup so I have to pass the some uh, grid of the record. So I'll go to my uh, record here. So let me open any record, say this one. And here uh, the course which I have, uh, which I'll select here, uh, you can go to course here and this is the course. So let's suppose I want to set this course here. So I will take the ID of this one. So you can go to the record and you can see the entity type is this course and then ID is after that. So this is the ID of that course. So this course I want to set when I will create the request here. So for the course applied for, let me set this grid. Okay, and the date of birth, you can set this some constant hard code value and the same for the country. So I'll go to my uh, student here and I'll go to the country here and this is the country say I want to select while creating the student so I will hard code that too so here 
so the entity name is country dnlb country and the id is this is the id of this record so let me copy this and put into the record so now we have set up you can see i have used the endpoint as a web api i am using the xml http request as a output format and then i am taking i have taken as a synchronous process and uh, this is my action and done so and i have set all the uh, input parameter now so it is done so now let me create the request so once you create the request then it will look like this so this is the code uh, which is applicable for the latest versions of the crm like you can as i mentioned before you can call the uh, uh, xml http request right from the web api type but what about the old versions how you will call that so old versions like crm 2013 11 or 15 so for that uh, to call the action uh, there is already some specific codes we, we used to use so if you see the uh, Uh, this is the request uh, for a body of the uh, action so you can see we will create the request body something like that and we will set the uh, uh, like if for the action is uh, specific to some entity then we will set the entity id then entity schema name then if you have any uh, input argument then you will set like that so those those things you will be passing to the some function so means you will wrap this request body into some function right so will you will create the uh, variable for that and then you will set for the request so it was if you see the request body it is very lengthy compared to the request body which we have generated here using the rest builder isn't it so that is the beautiful feature of the cm rest builder you can generate that query and it will be helpful for you so no need to write those piece of code here otherwise uh, when you write this code uh, manually then you may you may have so many syntax error and then it will consume a lot of time so i uh, recommend you to use this crm rest builder for building the any, any kind of query so you can see uh, this uh, for old version of crm here we are building the rec uh, request body and same xml http request we are using here also we are building the xml http request you can see here and here we are using the endpoint url with the post operation so it is similar to that and here also we are building the same and request here so post client url and what it will do is uh, it will generate the endpoint of that and you will send uh, and you can set the header request how you want and finally you will send the body here so when when you send the body then the your action will be called so because you have given the request name as a action name over here and it will be called so this is how uh, it is built in it is built in the old version of the dynamics like crm 2013 11 15 or uh, those those instances whether it is your on premise or online it is built like that but in case of online or the latest versions if you are working on then you can uh, leverage the uh, feature of this crm rest builder and you can generate that so i will be using this one and you can say you can see here uh, the parameter which i have set here it is it has created the object here and inside that object uh, the, it has set the first name last name the uh, string variables here uh, string parameters and since the course applied for and the countries country where the object here so it has created one object it has set the parameter for that the course id the schema name of that one you can see here and finally it has set the this object into this here you can see parameter country it has been set here and likewise it has set the parameter to the course applied for to the object what it has created now so this is how it is built and once the xml http request is sent here using this uh, parameter what we have built here in the top so it is sending and it is uh, going through the uh, to checking the uh, radius state so we know like we have uh, five different uh, types of radius state let me show you that so when you send any request it will go through this uh, five uh, states so means when it is uh, unsent then it is zero it is opened once then uh, header received two loading three and when it is everything is completed then a state a status is four, sorry a state is four so here when we are checking when a state is equal to four radius state is equal to four means it has sent everything to the server then when we have successful send then we'll have the response from the uh, request right so that we are checking a status so any status with the range of uh, four two hundred 200 range so it means it is success and uh, like that we have so many uh, http status you can find out here you can see uh, these uh, status ranges are there 
uh, you can see all the 200 series indicates these are success status and you can see mostly 200 means ok 201 means it has created but it has it is returning some result from that when it is 204 means it has uh, it, whatever the request we sent it has done it but it is not having any uh, thing to return so 204 uh, and then uh, 300 uh, status are for the redirection and the 400 are for the client errors like 404, uh, 400, 404 is not found then 400 is for the bad request you will these are the uh, you know popular uh, status from the request you will be encountering in day to day and and lastly uh, I'll talk about that is the server error so when it is 500 means most of us we know that 500 error, right it is internal server error so and for 402 that is bad gateway so like that uh, status you will be receiving when you will send this request over the uh, dynamics so so here uh, uh, I think I have explained you once we have the status successful done then we are, we are getting the response and then we are putting into the variable and we are passing the response as a JSON dot pass function and we are getting to result so this is uh, uh, this is how it is being done and here you can do a lot of things so like if if you have any uh, any any call like you you want to, you want to get this uh, data as a you know some some other entity you want to fetch again and then you want to set it so you can do that you can you can you can use this piece of code into the another function and you can leverage this how you want